आज जाने की जिद ना करो क्राफ्ट विला हैज मेड अ बिग स्टेटमेंट विद द फर्स्ट एंड ब्रांड न्यू एड कैंपेन आज जाने की जिद ना करो द कंपनी व्हिच इज वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट ई-कॉमर्स प्लेयर्स टू बी प्रॉफिटेबल हैज अ जीएमवी ऑफ 100 मिलियन डॉलर्स मेकिंग इट द फोर्थ लार्जेस्ट इन द स्पेस With purely organic growth until now, Cross Villa has decided to make a big marketing push. Main hu Karina Kapoor Khan. Cross Villa Miss Ethnic Contest mein aapka swagat hai. To meet its ambitious target of a billion dollars in GMV within the next 12 months. Manoj, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. We're very excited to be here particularly given that you're actually the fourth largest player in the e-commerce space and one that's very little talked about as such. Why is that? How have you managed to uh, stay under the radar to such a large extent? Well, basically, uh, what we're doing is very, very differentiated. Yeah. Craftsilla.com today is the largest online ethnic store, and what we're doing is we are taking ethnic outside of India and bringing global, and you know those kind of stuff. The way we do things are a little bit differently. Uh, we believe that we are here to create the most valuable e-commerce company. and because of that uh, basically your focus is more on the demand side metrics and supply side metrics and because we are one of the only players in the e-commerce ethnic space east west north south there is there isn't anyone like us it allows us to scale without really announcing ourselves you know it allows us to scale without beating our drums right that has been one of our you know success mantra be under the radar grow like hell but <laughs> don't really need to shout out uh, so what's the kind of growth that you have seen in the last few years what's the kind of growth that you've seen we basically have grown like 20 times in the last 12 months okay. so that's like in some ways unprecedented and uh, we are continuing to grow i mean the, the we are like at 100 million dollar gmv right now we expect to get like to billion dollar gmv by next 12 months i mean to get to that scale in next 12 months mm. is going to be a journey that we are looking forward in some ways yeah so what's interesting uh, manoj is your model yeah. you're very different from some of the other e-commerce players uh, in a few ways run us through that run us through how you've differentiated yourself so one thing which you do is in the marketplace we don't fudge with the marketplace we let it operate like a system has its own equilibrium it has its own optimality um, because of that basically we are able to juice out the maximum out of marketplace like why do you want to do marketplace is because it allows you to scale without really taking the baggage of inventory warehouse you know logistics and those kind of stuff which unfortunately the other players are still tied to uh, and i think uh, given that also that we are very strongly focused on something which is truly a part of this country right ethnic is this country is all about right so that has allowed us to scale without really so that's what i find interesting because the fact that you actually saw that potential saw that market yeah. in ethnic wear and yeah. by ethnic wear we're not just talking about fabrics or clothes but also jewelry and other artifacts what the, made you see or realize that potential because it's a fairly disorganized market yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what gave you the conviction that you'd be able to pull this off basically when me and monica my wife is going on a trip to kutch yeah i know it was so uh, i would say interesting to see that so much of supply is lying around but no one has done about anything about it right and 2010 2011 was the time when e-commerce was just picking up so at that point time we thought you know what a beautiful moment you know here is a supply here is ethnic which is the strength of this country which is lying around and here is online which is coming up let's marry that that thing online and when you started off you used up all of your savings you really put everything you yeah, had into yeah. this business so it it must have been uh, something that you really believed in what were some of the early learnings for you some of the stepping stones even though that you had the experience of uh, being a vc having seen uh, the process perhaps in other startups but it still must have been uh, an experiment oh yeah definitely basically our first year was where the most of the mistakes were made and that basically told us that you know 
building a company is, is like you know is it's a it's a its own journey no one can teach you right how to build yeah. a company you have to go through the grind of it right we you know we had a first year which was very tumultuous you know very chaotic uh, we hired a lot of people 100 people we became like 10 people in the next year right and you, you went down from 100 yeah, to 10 yeah yeah and we pretty much went to the bottom of things you know just uh, wow. so and then we pulled up we said you know we believe in it we think this is going to be the best this country will produce and then we said you know we sold our house we said you know let's let's really do it and it's going to so i think uh, i think what craftsla has gone through is something you know a uh, lot of people will talk about you know and you as we come bigger and bigger is that you know how basically the belief and the passion and the foundation is something which is more important than anything else you know what you do in the business uh standing tall you know, yeah. is very very important even though things will fall apart you so that's where it is so what fell apart what were the early mistakes yeah. uh, i asked because of course there must be learnings from yeah. them i think what we are doing was we're building company for investors uh, and what we are doing today is we we are telling investors and everyone when we are, we are pitching we're not building company for you we're building company for ourselves we believe that this is going to be a big company right this is a journey we are on to we want to be part of the journey come on board kind of stuff right? i think the first year we are really doing unnatural demand building we're like hiring a lot of people not building the business the right way is something i would say we made a mistake so you mentioned organic growth how did you get the word out or was it purely word of mouth that you managed to grow the number of merchants uh, that are automatically logging on to the site yeah. registering how did uh, that process uh, really take place because yeah, today you have uh, thousands of merchants uh, isn't yeah, it yeah we have close to 20000 merchants right. and uh, and most beautiful part of uh, having 20000 merchants is that we have not paid a single dollar in acquiring them you know, right. it's completely word of mouth which for a lot of people is hard to believe uh, today we have done phd on getting organic traffic you know there is no one i would say who knows better than us right. how to get organic traffic seo with the yeah. social media at facebook today is facebook of craftsilla is the most engaged facebook page not right. only in india but globally i mean that has been really told us you know yeah. by multiple people that surprises a lot of people surprises people at facebook now right. how did they do that you know it's just so i think social media organic searches blogging you know getting bloggers getting people to talk about us you know the word of mouth is actually very very strong for us uh, today also on google trends we are you know rising like this so in terms of a business model is it that you take a commission from every sale that's done yeah. on the site is that how it works yeah so business model is very very clean we we take 20% commission on each sale we there's no upfront like listing cost no registration cost and the merchants are okay with that 20% is quite a bit oh 20% is is these, these must be low value products these, as well right? no, not 20, uh, yeah. no 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 what's the average not, what's the average ticket size so average ticket size like close to $35 you know okay. oh, i would say you know, close to 1800 rupees okay and we are probably we have the highest average order value so you obviously giving them a reach to market that yeah. perhaps they couldn't find yeah, otherwise yeah. or see the the beauty of this ethnic space is a we're sitting on a supply which is low cost but we are demand side there's no price to it right so this product you know can be valued by you differently and valued by differently right okay. there's no price set for it right so so while the product is like 100 rupees selling at 1000 rupees 1500 rupees and stuff right that that is that huge gross margin is the strength of this okay category okay and what's the kind of profile that you see whether it's of merchants the kind of people coming online to use the site as a business and even on the demand side uh, is it across the board are you catering to um, urban markets both tier 1 tier 2 what is the kind of a profile you're looking at yeah so from from a seller side basically we have uh, pretty much the profile is very very different from the sellers you will find on other horizontal e-commerce companies so 
Our sellers are like NGO artisans, designers, boutiques, housewives, you know, small retailer shop. Some are wholesalers, um, but primarily these sellers are small sellers, and for them, craftsla is, is the primary channel of livelihood. I think that is also the social impact we're creating. Is is sort of I would say we're not drumming it up, yeah. but there's a lot of happening. The you know, there's a lot yeah. of things happening. I think we we would do something in craft and handicraft industry which no one would have done till today, not even the government. So we, I think the impact we will create in the next five years is something we are looking forward to in some ways. Take a break on that sure. note. Uh, we're going to come back and continue this conversation with Manoj in just a moment. Do stay tuned. Manoj, one of the other things that differentiates you from the rest is the fact that you haven't gone the discount route. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what made you decide that as a strategy? Yeah. You know, what made you take that conscious decision? Yeah, so basically, uh, a discount route was, uh, you know, forced in some ways to us, right? We, we didn't have money, we were like barely surviving, so that, you know, we can't really give, you know, discount, right? So, but what it led to in some ways is realization that, oh, actually I can create demand without discount. I think that was one of the biggest learnings out of our, you know, struggle. And then we said, let's continue with it, right? We, today we have zero discount policy, we don't, Although we get pushed around a lot, some people ask for discount, and no, we are not giving discount, right? Uh, so, I think that that is going to be one of our, you know, differentiating factor, right? We are we are here to create a very sustainable business and a very profitable business, and that cannot happen unless we, you know, make sure our margins are thick and you know, we are not giving discounts and stuff. So. And, and what is helping us because we are so differentiated and because there is not a lot of competition, we don't really need to give discount. We are giving them variety, we are giving them design, we are giving them new, you know, fresh product which they have never seen, right? So, there is no, for us, you know, there is no need for us to give discount. And you said this was Pan India. Any specific markets particularly that, that you see yeah. a lot of traction in? Uh, yeah, so basically, of course, India, we are scaling up very, very fast. Uh, we have now started Malaysia, we are now getting Indonesia, Thailand. Wherever we see ethnic, we want to capture it. So that's basically our vision. We want to become the biggest ethnic umbrella brand. We want to create ethnic empire. That's basically our vision. So in some ways, that's what we want to do. Did you have a eureka moment, Manoj? Because despite all the uh, hiccups, you know, as, as, as you do when you're starting up a business, you stuck to your guns. You said, this is my philosophy, this is how we're going to do it, uh, both you and Monica. Uh, was there a point though when things started to come together that you sort of sat back and said, now we're on track? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, last year, actually, before Diwali, you know, we, uh, you know, we remember, you know, and Monica, we used to look at our number of orders and every, you know, you know, we were getting 100 orders a day kind of stuff, right? So every order was like, oh wow, oh wow, kind of stuff. And suddenly we start to see like double every month right. and all that kind of stuff. And that point we realize now we are on the roll, like, right? and we have not stopped after that. I mean, we have continued to grow after that. Of course, now we have, um, you know, got twenty million dollar funding, and we are getting more, right? So. And what's all of that going into? Is it in developing the interface, going mobile yeah. as well, uh, in expanding internationally? So it's going primarily in marketing, uh, primarily in technology, primarily in customer happiness building the right team because if we have to go to the next level we need to have more Manoj and Monica. <laughs> right. So it's interesting because now you're finally getting into marketing yeah. as well. Perhaps this is at a stage in the business where you feel it's, it's relevant but even there you have a very specific campaign or idea as to how you want to go about it. Uh, yeah. Take us through some of the plans there. I mean it's also interesting because I was reading this, you've got a Miss Ethnic contest coming up yeah. where you've already got some 50,000 entries yeah, yeah, yeah. and again this is all organic. Yeah, yeah. basically so basically uh, today if you switch on a TV, every other ad is an e-commerce ad. Right? Yeah. So, so it's hard to even get noticed. right? So and we were scratching our head 
कि वट शुड वी डू आई मीन हाउ डू वी डू इज इन मोर कैपिटल एफिशेंट वे राइट सो एंड देन वी सैट लेट्स डू इट लिव इट डिफरेंटली लेट्स क्रिएट मोर कॉन्टेंट बेस्ड मार्केटिंग सो वी क्रिएट इट वर्ल्ड एथनिक डे ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट जून इज द वर्ल्ड एथनिक डे एंड क्राफ्टर डॉट कॉम इज अ पेरेंट ऑफ इट राइट सो इट गो नी सो एंड देन वी सैट सो इट वेंट वेरी वेल फॉर आज लेट्स डू मोर राइट सो इधन सेट के लेट्स डू मिस एथनिक बट वी डिट वॉन्ट टू डू you know miss india kind of stuff or miss world kind of stuff so said let's be only in online right and let's really go to the village level let us give every woman in this country to become diva of billions you know which is not possible through other pages right so and because of technology we can do that today right? and so we got 50000 entries of course we are hoping for more but now getting 50000 entries also is a uh, it's pretty fantastic for us yeah <laughs> All right. Well, Craftsville also has some uh, pretty killer brand ambassadors from Karina Kapoor to Vidya Balan. But uh, gearing up for a festive season as well, Manoj, yeah. what's on the anvil ahead of that? Any special plans, products? Uh, I won't say discounts. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. No, no, no <laughs> discounts. Uh, but uh, but clearly, you know, if you search for Diwali, we come at the top. So Diwali equal Craftsville dot com is going to be the story of Diwali this time. So it's not going to be any other e-commerce company. is going to be diwali kolkata.com so this 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 year is grassland year so i think nice <laughs> all right well a man clearly on a mission now we're going to take another very quick break when we return we'll also meet the better half of monica will also be joining us stay tuned grassland was started by uh, manoj and monica but the key thing is that uh, it was a company started by a uh, woman uh, monica based on her understanding of what the needs were for uh, craftswomen and i think that shows in the way they have built their business and uh, the second part was manoj's clear focus on uh, building a sustainable business so unlike uh, most other uh, e-commerce companies that you know focused on discounting and uh, and you know to get consumers manoj was very clearly focused on from day one building a profitable business and in fact uh, you know for the longest time craftsilla sorry the only profitable uh, e-commerce company in india monica thanks for joining us as well we've just been in a very engaging conversation with manoj which uh, ended with him telling us about how this diwali it was going to equal crafts villa <laughs> so very ambitious so looking forward to a lot of good things but i want to understand from you about um, your experiences when you first started the company because you both got into this together and put everything you had into it so i want to get your perspective as well on you know how it was the journey the struggle uh, to where you are today frankly the journey started with our trip to kutch where and we saw lots of artisans manoj has already briefed you about it yeah. so that was a point wherein we felt why not get these things online because india has such a rich culture uh, being in us we actually missed indian culture heritage and knew its value right. so uh, that was a point wherein we thought e-commerce is the only platform wherein we can have such huge collection so that's how we started it uh regarding all the struggles difficulties it's more like we feel it these are stepping stones that are really necessary for you to learn hmm. so anything that doesn't break you makes you stronger <laughs> <laughs> so what would be if you had to say today if you had to give advice to to young entrepreneurs like maybe the top one or two learnings or principles that you would guide them by top one will be i would say if you believe in something just follow it till the end okay because the time you think of quitting that's actually the time you are going to go up so in those moments and i know manoj has written about this in the past and he said you got to wait for magic to happen and for things to really come together but in those moments did you ever have disagreements about how to do things what strategy was right did you have a lot of constructive arguments basically as far as strategy goes uh, frankly we don't have loads of arguments it's more like we listen to each other try out things because we actually believe that there's no harm in trying out things especially when you are in an e-commerce space it's yeah. just easy to change strategies right so as far as strategies are concerned no we we do sometimes have arguments uh, <laughs> regarding uh, uh, probably I, i would say hr or how the website should look right the right. designing part of it but those are all constructive things absolutely so so manoj in terms of uh, roles and how you differentiate them how do you divide up the work or the areas that you both look after 
Okay. Yeah, so uh, he's looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, uh, I think our roles are, you know, in some ways different, in some ways fluid. Uh, and the, the reason why I say that is that I look after, you know, technology, marketing, and finance, and she looks after more operations and customer care and seller care and stuff, right? So. I think from that perspective, it's uh, sort of separate. But you know, we we also you know have worked together in the journey for four years. So you know, either of us can step into each other's very very easily. Okay. There's no, it's very hard to even <laughs> differentiate. <laughs> All right. So in terms of some of the things we're looking forward to now, particularly with festive season around the corner, uh, lots of excitement and lots of buzz. What's on offer? You, you differentiate into so many new fields. Jewelry is such a big uh, segment for you as well. So tell us a little about that. Uh, it's more like, especially for this Diwali season, yeah. we are concentrating on ethnic clothing because festive time is the time when everybody and everybody wears ethnic. Mm. So this is a big time for us to come out and say, we are one step, uh, one stop destination. Come here, you can buy your ethnic dressing, your ethnic jewelry as well as your home decor products for uh, for this particular festival right so lots that you can actually find actually, uh, so on the lots of new designs at amazing prices fast delivery those are the things that we are looking into okay and tell us a little bit about the culture here at Crafts Villa in terms of the team that you've now put together. As you said, you're once again on the growth track. So again, you will be, of course, uh, creating a bigger team. What are the things you look out for? Uh, what is the kind of culture that you have in the office or that you try and create? Frankly, in office, what we try to uh, create is that we are a big family. Mm. So in, in a family, we also have arguments. We also have disagreements. But those are all part of a fa family. Those are all healthy. It should be there, it's okay to deal with it. But we we all understand here that, especially in Bombay, majority of your day time you spend in the office. So let's make it pleasant. Uh, let's work together in a way so that everyone gains from it. Not just the company, but each employee should gain from here. Nice. And I've also heard that uh, Google is apparently making a film uh, on Crafts Villa. Yeah, so I mean, uh both Google and Facebook. <laughs> so, really? So uh, we are, you know, uh, one of the top two or three companies Google is making, you know, case study right now. And I think, uh, and the reason why even Facebook is doing it because we are a story which is very, very different. Uh, we have done things very, very differently, right? And we are creating impact through using digital technologies and impacting the, really the bottom of the, Tried out people right, in some ways. All right, awesome. Just one final question, Monica. As a woman, and I ask you this because we, we meet very few women who actually manage to uh, to lead successful careers uh, in in uh, any industry given the entire work life balance that they have to maintain. So, just how do you manage to do that? Frankly, a large part of credit goes to my family. That is my husband and kids. Uh, I have two small daughters, and they help me out a lot. <laughs> I still remember the initial uh, initial month when yeah. we when we actually started from home. Yeah. They used to help me pack things up. <laughs> so a I lot of credit about. goes to my family. He also helps me out a lot. We, I mean, yeah. sometimes we juggle with our duties, and he takes care of kids as well. All right. Uh, pleasure meeting both of you today, and we wish you all the best. Uh, given all that you said, I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of you here on E Inc. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks a lot Thank for having you. us Thank here. You. That's all from us this week on the show. Bye for now.